Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to my channel. I'm Tiffany Benson, one part of Team Benson, and today it's Sunday, so that means it's time for a garden tour. Okay, guys, so it actually is a little bit chilly of a morning. We've had some crazy, crazy weather, but that is spring here in the uh, Arizona Valley. So if you guys don't know, I am Arizona Phoenix, Arizona in zone 9B in the desert and in the city. So I am a city desert gardener. Now I grow all year long back here and this is one of the most interesting times of year because springtime releases a lot of different just liveliness in my garden. So you guys see the lizards, we have these big giant either roof rats or they are pack rats in the desert that like to gather shiny things for their dens and dig in your garden. <laughs> there are butterflies and moths that like to lay different things on different plants and there are hummingbirds everywhere and lots and lots of bees. I'm so excited because this year my garden has really really attracted a lot a lot of bees so I think that when I get to the point to where I'm making like my or growing like my cucumbers and my melons it's going to be a perfect time to be able to grow those things in here because there's going to be enough bees to be able to pollinate it. So I want to show you guys my garden. It is in this mix of there are some new things in here and there's some old things in here and then there's some things that it's their time to go dormant. So let's talk about it. Okay guys, so the creatures in my garden are real, so real. I have something digging in my garden. So I'm just going to show you guys how I kind of go about that and what I do for that. So let's start with my herb bed so that you guys can see what it looks like. All right, so if you guys remember, this was completely overgrown. We cut it all the way back, all the way, all the way back. We harvested everything, dried all the herbs, got them up in the jars, and now everything's starting to grow back again. So up front we have our thyme. We have some chives that I never harvest fully the chives because we use those fresh. And then we have our sweet marjoram, guys. Remember, the sweet marjoram was nothing but sticks, and it's starting to grow back all of its new leaves. The oregano, on the other hand, that one wasn't going well. <laughs> but the uh, parsley is starting to send up its middle stalk, so it's trying to go to seed. We're going to go ahead, harvest the parsley all over again, and get the last bit of that. The sage is doing quite well. We have a lemon thyme back there. And then our cumin over here is dried out so we can actually collect the seeds from the cumin plant right back there. We have a curry tree right here in front of it that is starting to look nice and green again. So now that the sun is coming up and it's starting to warm up, the curry plant is getting its color back, thank God, and it is also going to flower. So hopefully we'll be able to collect some seeds from the curry plant. Now we have coming up guys, look at the beanie babies in our Dollar Tree pots. I'm so excited. They're getting way bigger and they're looking quite healthy. So every day I just turn them. We had a really, really good germination. There's a couple spots that didn't germinate or like one or two plants that we lost, but overall guys, really, really good germination with these. And these are just bush beans. They're big kahunas and they're purple, royal, royal purple beans. Now going over here, this is where we start to see the digging. <laughs> so annoying, but those are pack rats. So, so guys, in the desert, <laughs> we have all different types of things that can come to your garden. Pack rats are one of those things. Now, if you guys know, I grow an organic garden. I don't like to put things in my garden. And also, or pack rats are just pack rats. <laughs> they like to find little shiny things to take back up to that mountain back there to be able to put in their dens to make them beautiful. Well, they also dig in your garden. Now, I'm a very big firm believer of growing an organic garden, leaving everything the way it's meant to be. So I try and do things that stop them from digging on the plants that I'm trying to grow out. Because grow, part of growing an organic garden is just waiting for the bigger predator that's coming in to be able to stop that. Well, the bigger predator is going to be either a rattlesnake or a coyote. 
neither one of which I want in my garden. <laughs> so, which we've had rattlesnakes come back and solve the problem. And then we've also had pack rats go over the wall and the coyote solve the problem. But until then, we're just going to try and do our best. So you are going to see little white baskets in my garden. One of the cheapest ways I found to protect my garden. And so this is what I'm talking about. So right now, this is currently my onions. And if you look underneath here, my melon bed. Now I had the basket over here because it was digging over here, which I'll probably put another one over here. But all I do is I just put the basket over the things that it's digging and it doesn't knock it over which makes life so much easier. So we have another little melon up in here too that just is born. Happy birthday, little melon. And so we just put a basket over it so at least that protects it. And then we have our Kentucky Wonder Beans here climbing. Now here is where I'm a little bit worried because I should have put a basket over these pots because I planted some seeds in here so I'm not sure if the pack rat destroyed the seeds or did whatever to them I might put some more seeds in here and then put a basket over top of these I do have to go to Dollar Tree and get some more baskets but guys look at this look at the serrano pepper the serrano pepper is now growing normal sized serranos and remember it was growing like little baby ones for some odd reason and it's huge it's really, really tall. I'm si I'm really excited about it. There's two serranos in here and some onions in there. We have a Roma tomato here that is putting off all new flowers. And look, it has a little spider in there protecting it. It's a little angry that I just moved it. And we have some tomatoes on there. More Roma tomatoes over here with some tomatoes on it. Guys, look, Miss Eggie over here has gotten some eggplants. You guys see that? So excited about that. We have not had eggplants in a while, so that's going to be fun. And then up here we have some peppermint, some thyme, we have some chocolate mint, and then here's the oregano that's doing really, really well. So we've been harvesting this oregano and drying it. It's putting off some nice, nice like long leaves. So we're harvesting that one, drying it. Hopefully we'll get enough for that one to go inside. We have tons of peppers on our um, poblano pepper here. This thing is super hot. So there are a lot of really hot peppers. Mr. Benson is loving this plant right here. And then we have our shishitos. So love the shishitos. See this guys? Shishito peppers every single week. You just get more and more and more. If you guys are not growing shishito peppers, I'm an advocate, make sure you grow them. So guys, with having a small space garden, you have to decide what is going to be the most productive for you and what's going to grow the most amount of food for you. Shishito peppers, that is it. <laughs> you can have shishito peppers coming out of your ears and have nice blistered shishito peppers to use as a side dish like pretty much every week once it starts going. And I found that our family, our family of two, can literally have shishito peppers every single week off of just two plants. So if you have a bigger family, plant an extra one, plant two more, but you can have a ton of peppers and a ton of food just from something that's growing in a small space. Now, obviously I just wanted to have so much heat in our life because we have more Serrano peppers right here. This is the one I was gonna take out. I left it in, but it produced so many guys. I think this one produced over like 40 serrano peppers the first time and then now it died back and then now it's flushing again and it just has more peppers on it more flowers on it it's gonna be crazy and look our other kentucky wonder is starting to make its climb i'm so happy to have my arches full of something again because arches are beautiful when they're full we have our black cherry tomato that i left in guys mostly because i just forgot about it and it's starting to grow. So yeah, so we're just gonna see what happens with that. It looked a little rough, but we'll see what happens. Down here, we also have a big, beautiful basil that's producing nice, beautiful leaves. My basil's been trying to go to flower. This, is, this basil was here from last year, so I've just been popping off the top here. This is the flower head. Just pop off the top and it'll continue to grow. And then we have our pioneer beans over here that look at these bush beans guys i totally thought these were a pole bean they're not they're a bush bean but look at that producing so many little beans on here so i think this fall i'm going to plant a lot more of these 
Do you guys have that issue too? Comment down below where you always think that you plant something that's supposed to be a running type and it's a bush type or you plant something that you think is a bush type and then it ends up growing a 20 foot vine. <laughs> Now guys, my big beefsteak tomatoes have really been struggling with the weather, me not watering it the way that I should, but we've finally gotten them cut back and they're grown back, and now they're starting to grow tomatoes. <laughs> so hopefully everything goes well, we start getting some more tomatoes and life will be good. We have some onions, more onions. You guys know that I'm trying to grow a year supply of onions in my small space garden. And then over here in some more pots, we have our Armenian cucumbers. Look at this, guys. It's getting big. Now, right here, you will see at the very base of it, these are um, leaf miners. So let's talk about leaf miners. So guys, why do my Armenian cucumbers have leaf miners? Well, they have leaf miners because Armenian cucumbers can survive and thrive in triple digit weather. So right now having the cooler days is, or cooler mornings, the Armenian cucumber is not that happy. So it attracts some of the insects. Luckily, they attract leaf miners. Leaf miners are the easiest thing to deal with because all you do is go to the end of the track in the leaf and you just squish it and that kills the leaf miner. It's perfectly fine. Now, I planted my Armenian cucumbers early because I want them to really cover this arch and cover these onions below it before it starts to get to be like, you know, 125 degrees. <laughs> but they're gonna struggle in the beginning because they're not gonna really like these colder, temp colder temperatures. But as soon as we start hitting the 90s and our days, or our nights are going to be like in the 80s, you will see these things explode. And then they're gonna put off big, beautiful, ar Armenian cucumbers and we will have those all summer here's hoping so back in the corner there guys we have some more onions because why not and then we have little baby okras popping up this is our first one we have we should have about three or four in this bed usually I grow three okras here and then we have some more parsley that's gonna need to be cut back we have our lemongrass. Look at how green and beautiful our lemongrass is now that the summer has hit. This is the time to start making some beef stock and chicken stock and just chicken soup, all that. We have our dill over here that's throwing up some flowers. I'm trying to get these monarch butterflies, guys. I planted one for the butterflies, but so far nothing. But at least we have a big, beautiful, furry dill plant. Now, up here, we have some spearmint that's doing okay. I should trim it back and yeah, probably give it a little bit more water regularly. And then we have our mojito mint up there. Our peas we still need to take out. I've been a little busy, but look at this. The pumpkin is starting to make its climb. I'm really excited. I can't wait for it to grow nice and huge and cover this arch. That's gonna be so beautiful with baby pumpkins flowing below it. And then we have some onions right underneath there and right underneath there. But there's two pumpkin plants on here. I like to grow two plants per arch. I think that fills it out nicely and kind of really protects everything. Now over here we have our Roma tomato that is starting to put off. I saw some, I don't know if my husband ate them. Nope, there's one more coming in. But it's starting to put off normal size um, Roma tomatoes now because they were a little wonky but the plant has recovered from the winter. It's flowering again, and it's producing actually a decent amount of Roma tomatoes. We have our carrot patch over here, or our carrot raspberry patch, because this is a raspberry plant right there, and then we have some nice carrots coming in. They're finally starting to stand up nice and tall, so that I think that means that the roots are starting really to develop on those carrots, so I am excited about that. Now guys, a theme in my small space garden is just going to be to plant it all, <laughs> plant it all and just see what happens because you only have a big, you only have so much of a space. So if you can plant everything, give yourself a nice variety of things to eat, then you don't get bored and then you don't have to go to the grocery store because even if it's like a small harvest, you're still going to get a harvest. Okay guys, I ran out of space with my battery, so I'm not sure where I left off at, but we're back to the garden. <laughs> so it's supposed to be about 90 degrees today, so I'm hoping that everything is going to really get that boost of energy that it needs because it is pretty chilly this morning. 
Now over here we have our pot arch and this is my patio arch is what I like to call it. So we have some onions in here and we have another big beefsteak tomato here that likes to put off these little bitty cherry tomatoes. Our flowers are starting to look done guys. We had them for so long, they were beautiful. But we are going to try and harvest some calendula seeds and then all of this new um, nasturtium. We are going to uh, put this together to make like some um, some tonic for our skin uh, toner. Then we have a cucumber that is coming in nicely right here. We have some chamomile over here that needs to be harvested. We have a big wild <laughs> look at this, guys. This is what your um, Brussels sprout looks like when it goes to seed and then we have some carrots in a pot here now look at here guys this is where I had some more um, ginger is what I'm trying to grow here and this got dug up so we're gonna try and bury it back little pesky little pack rats and then we have some seeds in here too which hopefully there's still seeds in here because as we can see see there we go the pack rat ate the seed. You guys see that? So we're going to have to plant, replant these ones out because, yes, I can see the seeds dug up here too. So we have to replant this one out, and then we're going to put a little trash can over that. Over here we have some thyme, and we have some lemon balm, and then we have a potato right here, and we have some stevia right here. Now back up in here, we have some more carrots. These ones are like my little finger length carrots. And then this tomato, guys, this one is a Roma tomato. There's two of them in this pot and they have just gone nonstop and putting out tomatoes. This has produced tomatoes for me all winter long and now moving into the spring and hopefully moving into the summer. And look, we even got like a little red one right there. And then we have some onions right in front of it. And look it up here, guys. This is the mulberry tree. It's putting off mulberries. I will grab this one over here if I can reach it. It's gotten so much taller, guys. So, so tall. But look at that. Beautiful little mulberries. This one is a dwarf mulberry tree, and it doesn't feel like a dwarf because it is huge, but it's producing this year. So, guys, I got this tree about three years ago. Look how tall it is. About three years ago as a cutting so it was just a little stick and now it is producing it's very tall and it's beautiful now speaking of trees I have two more I want to show you guys one of which has some friends on it this is my dwarf Mexican lime tree and as you guys know it got worked over during the storms and so it is trying to grow its leaves back but it wasn't too healthy it still has a couple of bad leaves on it now if you guys look closely this right there is not bird poop let's grab something and poke it so we're not going to kill it but as you can see watch it's going to move maybe it's going to move <laughs> it's trying to be stealth <laughs> But this right here is not bird poop. This right here is a hornworm. The same thing right there. We have another one right there. Now, it's crazy. Normally you would think hornworms were those big green things that eat your tomato plants. And our tomato plants, thank God, are very healthy, have no hornworms. Our lime tree, on the other hand, attracts these types of hornworms that are like a moth. It's a... It's really pretty moth when it, it turns into one, but it attracts them whenever it is sick and needs to shed some leaves. So I'm not freaking out. I'm not removing them. There are three of them on there. I don't know where the third one is, but I saw three of them total and they have just been eating the dead leaves. But what they're doing is they're stimulating growth on the plant. So the plant is getting rid of those dead leaves, but it's stimulating all of the growth and growing new leaves so those things are pretty huge <laughs> so they have been there for a while because at this point they're almost full grown so all of this new growth in this plant has been caused by the simulation of those hornworms which is why i'm not going to take them off we're not going to be getting limes over the summer so i'm just going to let them eat it down eat all the bad leaves down and all the the dead leaves down and then let those new ones grow in so this is what i mean by that guys look at all of these new little baby leaves 
coming in. And that's what those hornworms are doing. They're stimulating that growth. Now over here, banana. Look at that banana, guys. Look at that big, beautiful leaf coming up. I don't know when I'm supposed to get bananas. I don't know how that happens. I know that the banana plant had a baby and it's right there. But I'm just excited that it looks good and it's getting really, really big. Now we have some more peppers on, on over here. We have a Carmen sweet pepper here and here that's producing nice peppers. We have some more green onions right there. And then we have our sweet Marconi peppers right here that are finally starting to produce some sweet Marconi peppers. These are one of my favorite peppers and I'm pretty excited about that. All right, guys, that is it. That is my garden tour. As you can see, we have lots going on in here. Lots to, uh, lots of little problems we need to solve. So we need to go to the Dollar Tree, get us some more of those baskets so that then we can get our seeds going without getting dug up and eaten by the pack rats. But I hope that you guys are having an amazing Sunday. I am getting ready to be off to work and we are going to actually do a fashion show today. So I'm pretty excited about that. But until next time, grow yourselves a garden because even a small space can provide you with tons of food. Bye guys.